everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So, I had some time today after I worked on an Ameritron amp. And the motivation slash desire to work on my own personal amplifier. So, the RF deck is, is now completed. Other than rescaling the meters, well, the backing plates, but that's easy. Well, I'm going to have someone silk screen, but I'll do that after it's up and running. So I'm going to go over, like do a rough go over on everything. If you want to see the progress of this, I, you know, I did step by step videos from the beginning till now. I also have to vacuum out all the shavings but whatever so this thing was a lot of work this is my own personal amplifier it's not for sale period not for sale uh, I might make others at some point but they'll be in a new cabinet be a lot different I, cr I have a few of these cabinets and I crammed all this into this cabinet this is the RF deck cabinet I've showed the power supply cabinet uh, you know actually it's, it says filter caps and blower all that stuff but the plate transformers are separate but that that's for other videos this is just the RF deck so I'm not gonna go too crazy explaining things you know it has a Pi output network Pi input network progressively shorting rotary switches this one's a 40 amp one made by multi-tech that's been modified now it's an 80 amp doubled up the wafers and everything contacts no padding caps on the output side. 3,000 puff cap on this side. If I think this one goes up to 700. It's, it's more than is needed. Um, the plate and the load. But that's what I have. So tried to keep this total build price as low as I can. I've used parts that I have. Everything is rated for 100% duty cycle. 200 puff, 15 kV, energy corp doorknob caps, the RJ2Bs in parallel for the output switching, the SFT 600 coax for the output. So this choke was made by my buddy Jim, VE7RF. I asked him to type something up and I'll put it in the description for the video. That's a ferrite loaded choke. So, there's the anode connection. I, I did this. I have a clip. Clips to a fin. I'll tighten that up. But, and a couple of the 15, uh, I have two 1500 puff high energy core doorknob caps in series, 7.5 each. So now I have 15 kV at half of the total capacitance of one capacitor so and I have two uh, 0 0.01 30 kV ceramic disc caps that he provided so the B positive comes in and connects the stud right here and that's the B negative it connects right there so people thought that the super con connectors were or the high voltage you know, B positive and B negative. That is not the case. So I'm going to show you. So this is called an Alden, Alden, Alden connector. This plugs into the bottom half right here. You know, there's an interlock, so this is unplugged and pulled out. It'll shut down. But again, I'll go over all that in another video. So this secure is secured through the hole in the back I'll show you when I flip it around the be positive be negative okay and this this is flexible metal conduit so it's shielded and you know so uh, you can't get a shock or electrocuted or, or anything so that's that so I'm going to show the inside of this really well as a socket, 
spark gap on the plate side, spark gap on the load side. Everything's crimped, soldered, just no spared labor <laughs> or, or expense on just, just doing it all right. So this is a solid cover. Real thick, it's thick material. Um, I'm going to run it like this for now. And the tube will never get close to its maximum temperature for the seal. Uh, the first seal between, the first ceramic to metal seal. Uh, I forget what that is, 200 Celsius. I forget, I have to look at the spec sheet. But, um... So if I have to, I mean, nothing in here will get even close to the max temp. The intake temp will be limited to a certain temperature. I'll have a thermal switch in the bottom cabinet. So if the room were to get too hot, it'll shut down. Blower will continue to run, film will shut off, everything shuts off. Um, this won't be near me. I, I don't know why people like having amps right next to them. It, this this is designed for 100% duty cycle. It has grid overload, uh, plate overload, you know, circuits, uh, opto isolators. So lightning fast. It'll bias it off, unkey it, and it, it just it'll be out of sight, out of mind, real quick. Easy to change bands. I already mapped out the the settings for the uh, turns counters for the output network. I also have to label it. You know, I don't know how I'm going to do that and what I'm going to use for that yet. But um, So changing bands is a piece of cake. There's no roller inductor. I would never use a roller inductor. Uh, but So yeah, out of sight, out of mind. But anyway, I might possibly... Uh, I used to do this years ago and they do it in broadcast transmitters. Possibly, possibly, but probably not going to do it cut a hole in the solid top cover and attach a chimney to the top cover and then allow you know the chimney to hover above the tube pot or possibly uh, slip over some of it I'd have to notch it out this is the anode connection to the plate blockers a uh, uh, hose clamp goes around this but might just put it over just allow some to go up out of the top but the problem is this is going in a cabinet It'll have, uh, I didn't put the tracks on, it just screws it going real quick. But this slides out of the cabinet, so the cabinet has a top cover. It looks like a, basically like a mini fridge. I've shown the cabinet in other videos, and just look at the other videos if you want to see it. But, um, so basically, there's a small gap, so it's still going to hit the top, and then it'll go backwards. But, I don't know, I'm not worried about that. I'm sure that's sufficient, but I'm just saying, I could do that if I want to. But, so, that's that. Very, uh, just very well thought out. Just lots and lots and lots of thinking. You have to think of it all prior to doing anything. Yeah, I didn't drill any extra holes. I mean, this I reused this cabinet, so it has extra holes. But, you know, I thought it all out. And made it happen. So the, if you look at my some of the other videos, you'll see the the setup, the chain drive setup that I used with the sprockets and everything. Oh, that was a that was a lot of work. So I wanted to reuse this panel. I already have I think three or four sets of these meters. In order to use these meters, I had to use that metering board because they're only 100 microamps each. So I already had the panel, so it was just a real challenge. You know, if you're, if you have a cabinet and you start with a fresh cabinet, then you don't have to work around trying to get everything to work in existing holes, you know, but I like a challenge. This was a challenge. So when I put the cover on, the lip and the, whole, the uh, screws go into the lip, the right angle lip for the cover, and then the same with the bottom cover. Um, I don't have them near me, but I've shown them in other videos. So, Okay, so I will flip it over and show you the bottom. 
and then the back and that'll be it so i will see you guys soon oh man I, i'll tell you this thing is now it's heavy it's like really heavy i'm glad that i didn't try putting transformers in here when they wouldn't have fit anyway or well at least the filament transformer or uh the uh, transformers for the relays or anything else. It's just so heavy. Anyway, so here's the input circuit. I use the TL922 output rotary switch. Progressively shorting for the input circuit. Again, 100% duty cycle. I did not map out the settings for the for for the uh, 160, 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10 yet. So I left the 50 ohm cathode resistor in that'll come out when I go to test it bias diodes are in I'm gonna end up shorting some out I'll fine-tune it I might add a switch which is super easy just that's why I'm leaving this hole open otherwise I'm gonna plug it and I'll just run two wires over but again I'm not worrying about that till it's up and running and then it'll allow me to switch between two bias settings so you got the metering board slash protection board. You have the, the rheostats to adjust the limits. Well, actually, I'll turn around and show you that after. Bias vacuum relay. Input vacuum relay. The output vacuum relays are in the output RF compartment. I should do those before. Again, a lot of work. Lots and lots of work. I'm very proud of this. I think it came out nice. You have the test points for the filament. It also has a meter that shows the filament voltage, which can be calibrated on the metering board. Okay, so I'll show you the back. Be right back. So here's the back. Obviously, it's flipped upside down still. These are the filament connections. It's AC here, not DC. I had a black and red one, so I used them. I don't really care if they match or not, but as the customers, they would match. So, I had this panel cut. This used to be the driver compartment side. This is the original hole for the that conduit for the B positive and B negative for the plate supply. A new one. It's nice, so it'll allow me to, the way I have it set up, I take the nut off, install it, and I can connect the wires. It's kind of a pain to move it around with that attached. So that's why I did it that way. So we have the Amphenol connector, which brings the connections to the bottom through this shielded cable. So... I have the book for the original unit, so I tried to keep as much of the wiring as stock as possible to save me from more work than I'd have to do. That takes time integrating new with old. So the 12 volt supply that feeds the board, the 24 volts, like all that stuff comes up through here. Uh, the center tap that goes back, the cathode return goes back to the filament transformer center tap. I used two of the pins. I think they're rated for 13 amps each. I just wanted a second one just to be safe. One would be enough, but I have one extra that I, I'm actually not using. So there's no AC coming up to the top, no um, 220 or anything. Everything in the amp in the bottom runs on 220, so the amp won't need a neutral, just two hots and ground. I'm sorry. Yeah, two hots and a ground, no neutral. This does nothing. That's disconnected. That was the control cable for, for the original unit. So I added a 716 DIN connector. Originally I had an HN. Input SO239. Here are the overload trip points. Once it's set, it's set and forget. This was the stock exhaust connection so there was a inner wall I showed in one of the other cabinets so that just gave some ventilation for a compartment 
in between the RF compartment and the um, rear wall. So this had a there was a um, like a manifold or something between the rear wall and the RF compartment to keep RF out of that compartment and it allows you to put a hose on this so it has shield but I left it on there instead of just putting a cover on it just so it'd be easier to pick it up okay so I think that's about it for now so I am so happy that it's done this was just so much work so I know I have some solder and metal shavings here and there I have to get all that out of here but this is done now I can get the other cabinet in here and I think I'm gonna use electrolytic caps I'm getting from Jim I'm gonna have a very solid plate supply uh, it's 5300 AC at 3 amp CCS and I'm gonna have a lot of capacitance a very serious serious glitch resistor just uh, built well this is my again my personal box and I had a lot of the parts already so you know I just wanted to do it it's a fun project and uh, I thought it'd be neat to put on YouTube for people to see. And then at some point, I may make more. Most likely for people outside the United States. Maybe one a year. Maybe one every other year. Who knows. But, thank you for watching. If you like the video, please hit the like, share, and subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Again, my websites are amprepairguy.com. And also HarbachElectronics.com. And my buddy Jim, he gave me some calculations for this. And he provided me with the plate choke. And this has been a fun project for us both. Even though he's up in Canada. up uh, I always forget what part. He's up near uh, Washington State. In uh, Canada, over the border. But, uh... Yeah, he's far. We've never met. Hopefully someday we'll meet, but this has been a lot of fun. It's definitely different than what I do day in and day out. And I uh, can't wait to see this thing fired up, but I already know it'll work. I know, I mean, I know the input and output networks will work. They've been resonated. Um, might have to tinker around with the protection circuit a little bit, possibly, but everything else is, I've, you know, I've done it over and over, you know, so... It's a massive filament choke. And, uh, so that's about it. So, thank you very much for sticking with me on this project and watching and making comments. And next will be the power supply, which will be a lot less work, a lot less complicated. So, so it's just very, very tedious. Very, very, very tedious. All Teflon wiring. So, again, thank you. Have a good night. Stay tuned. 73.